This is Wrecked, the bonus episode where I either recommend a book or I wreck it. I'm Karina Pereira and on today's episode I bring you Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. This was such a difficult episode to make because I had no idea which book to bring. I had so I read so many nice books in the last few months and I didn't want to leave anything behind especially because it's it's almost the end of the um, of the season and I wanted there are so many books that I would like to recommend um, this episode and I even thought about doing an episode with more than one book. There were like three books that I wanted to uh, bring to the podcast still but then I thought that would be a bit unfair because in the last bonus episodes I have brought one book each and I think it would be a bit unfair for these books to be paired with other brilliant books. A little bit like the Booker Prize when Bernardine Evaristo had to share the book with the award with Margaret Atwood. They're both good but there was no need for that I think especially with Margaret Atwood being already so known but yeah we're not discussing the Booker Prize here but it kind of reminded me of that and I did not want to do that to any of these books so what I've decided to do is I have time next season to talk about other books so this time I'm only bringing one book and one book only And that's Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas, which, and I can of course already put it up there, it's a recommendation. I love books with ghosts. Even though, as I said before, I am afraid of ghosts, all the stories that end up being my favorite end up containing ghosts or spirits that wander into the ordinary world. Actually, every single story that I have started because I haven't yet finished any of them. Like the the biggest stories that I have like this idea to make of, I wouldn't say a novel, but to to develop those ideas are stories in which there are ghosts acting like humans or acting as if they, you know, they are dead, but they're in the living world. And I don't know if this obsession started with the graveyard book or not, but I do remember that the first story I wrote regarding that was I think even before I read the graveyard book and it was when Terry Pratchett dies and I saw an image of death playing chess with with um with Terry Pratchett it was a drawing and it just gave me that idea and since then all the stories that I want to write all the fictional stories I want to write have either death or ghost in there as a real thing as a person so It's no wonder that this book has become one of my favorites of the year. I've, when I read the premise, I knew I had to read it. Again, ghosts, cemetery, Halloween kind of vibes. And well, the book lives up to the hype. What's the book about? Yadriel is a brujo. Actually, Yadriel is a boy, a trans boy. And in his family, there are these traditions with uh, Dia de los Muertos and, well, his family wants him to become a witch. But of course, he's not a witch because he is a boy, he is a wizard, he is a brujo. So he decides to perform some sort of magic uh, to prove to his family that he is, in fact, a brujo. And it actually works. He does this with uh, his cousin, it's a secret, so his family doesn't get to see it. But he does manage to prove that he's a brujo. And he does a summoning, so he thinks he is going to summon maybe his cousin, because his cousin has disappeared and nobody knows where he is, So and his spirit also hasn't shown up, even though they did feel, because they are brujos, so they have these feelings they felt that Miguel had died, but his spirit doesn't show up. So when he summons that spirit, he thinks that it's his cousin Miguel, but it is not. It is the school's bad boy. The school's bad boy has no idea how he ended up there and how he died. So Yadriel and Julian, the school's bad boy, are going to try and figure out with the help of Maritza 
what happened to Julian and why he is dead. And the book is amazing. It's just so well written and I had coincidentally and not on purpose watched Coco just like two days or one day before I started reading this book which was so great because it gave me so much background story of something that I didn't really know about. I had an idea about Dia de los Muertos and in Portugal we also kind of celebrate the day but not really like that. We celebrate it as a way of paying homage to those that died but we usually just go to the graveyard all together but I learned from Coco a lot more um, about Dia de los Muertos and then it was really nice to have it as a background for this book. It's amazingly written, the environment that it manages to create is like it's Halloween every day. The story is really good, has very nice um, plot twists as well and plot points even though of course throughout the story at some points you kind of figure out one thing or another, not everything is exactly a surprise at the end, which is good. Um, usually people say that a well-constructed book is one that people actually can guess some of the plot and it keeps you on your toes in a sense because you, you do think you got some things, you do think you figured out some things, but you do not know it. And then the way that it develops um, whatever is trying to, to convey and, and, and how it lets the reader um, find it out it's really good the only thing that I think I would point out is there is a scene at the end where I think Maritza is almost forgotten which I thought was a bit weird because Maritza was there but suddenly the whole scene goes around Yadriel as if she was not there and that was a bit weird for me and there was like also a little bit at the end that it sounded maybe a little bit too perfect but I have no complaints about the book I think it is a point of this, it is also a romance, so it is a point that's going to be happy and with a happy ending and I, it was just such a sweet story and so entertaining. So if you don't know, I know that um, Halloween is gone but November, you know, still those autumn vibes and I think that if you want to read also a book written by a trans author and with a trans character in which the story of Dia de los Muertos and the whole plot is as important as what Yadriel is going through because the one of the main points of the story is his struggle to be taken seriously by his family because they don't really accept him as a brujo. So the whole issue that I am sure a lot of trans people have to deal with is as important as a whole plot and, and as defining for the book as everything else. So this is also a good book for you to educate yourself on trans issues and just to have a lot, a lot of fun. I can recommend it enough. I will be back in two weeks with another main episode. This time is the actual goodbye of season one. Season two will start in January. So for next episode, I am going to talk a little bit about the plans for season two. And the last episode of the season is actually going to be another bonus episode. And I already know which book I am going to talk about. I actually left it for last because I really want to talk about it. You can find me always on social media, even during the months that I am taking a break to prepare for season two. I'm very active on Instagram and always posting what I have read, what I've liked, didn't like. And you can find all of my social media on linktree slash Karina Pereira. A, a little note as well for those living in Rotterdam. Um, Boss and Young, the bookstore I work at, is going to start a book club called Educate Yourself. We are going to read books by BIPOC and we are going to try and educate ourselves on racism, ableism, LGBTQIA plus issues. So if you want to join us, you can always send an email to info at bossandyoung.nl. The book we are starting with is So You Want to Talk About Race. And I'll talk to you in two weeks. Thank you.